What would you do if your partner demanded to pull over during the middle of a trip and go home, especially when both of you share ownership of the vehicle? Wouldn't that leave a sour taste in your mouth? In fact, wouldn't that discourage you from ever going anywhere with that person ever again? That, my friends, is the situation of NASA right now with Russia on the ISS. Over the decades, the Americans and the Russians grew the $100 billion plus complex, which is about as long as a football field, consisting of two main sections, one run by Russia, the other by the US and other countries. The station was widely seen as a symbol of the post-Cold World partnership between the two space superpowers, Russia and the US, but it seems like that huge collaboration could be coming to an end. Last year, Russia announced that it plans to leave the ISS after 2024. What did NASA have to say about this? Well, luckily, US Space has a genius solution for this ordeal. Now, we all know that the cooperation, or to call it exactly, the dependence of the US on Russia in space has to pay very expensive fees. $4 billion, 10 years. A great and powerful nation like the US has had to pay and suffer. American pride has been hurt, not because of its high cost, but because of its dependence on its biggest rival, Russia. One of the main risks of US dependence on Russia is geopolitical. The relationship between the United States and Russia has been strained over the years due to several factors, including conflicts in Syria and Ukraine, and allegations of Russian interference in US elections. In the event of a crisis in US-Russia relations, there is a risk that Russia could use its control over crew transportation to the ISS as a bargaining chip or as a way to exert political pressure on the US. This could put the safety of US astronauts at risk and could also impact the scientific research being conducted on the ISS itself. But this is not talking just about the Soyuz. Remember the RD-180 engine? 23 years ago, amid a post-Cold War glow, U.S. defense contractors began using a cheap and efficient Russian engine to launch American military rockets into space. Afterward, with Vladimir Putin's authoritarian regime opposing American interests in Syria, Crimea, and across the globe, the use of Russian technology to launch secret spy satellites and other sensitive payloads is increasingly viewed as a security and geopolitical liability. However, at that point, defense officials say there is no ready replacement available. This is perhaps the reason for Ragazin's extravagance and overbearingness. The main responsibility falls on NASA, the space agency which is considered number one in the world but at the time could not do more. Luckily, Elon Musk and SpaceX appeared, and NASA seems to have found the light of freedom again. Cooperation with SpaceX, the solution to all of its problems. Unfortunately, SpaceX has no plans for a space station in low Earth orbit. The US government can't build another space station. Indeed, the ISS was in many ways a diplomatic project to bring the US and Russian cooperation on a post-Soviet era project along with other international partners. It wasn't built to be cost-effective either. Operating the ISS costs NASA a budget of around $4 billion annually. NASA would rather use those limited resources for projects like returning to the moon and venturing on to Mars. The hope of buying commercial space station services a la carte could save the space agency a lot of money. The agency estimates that the commercial crew program, where SpaceX's Dragon space vehicles fly NASA astronauts and supplies to the ISS, saves as much as $30 billion. This strategy where we're partnering with industry makes the best sense from a budget perspective, NASA shared. These commercial space stations will be owned and operated by these private companies, right? And NASA will just be buying services that they need. NASA will set the standards for services and certify commercial space stations for human habitation and safety. But at the end of the day, NASA just wants to be able to be one of many customers. Axiom Space is one of the many players that are aiming to commercialize the low Earth orbit sector by launching their own space stations. In 2024, the company has planned to launch the first module of its space station, making it the world's first commercial habitat in the low Earth orbit. 
So far, the company is making significant progress on its all-private space station. Images shared by former NASA astronaut Michael Lopez Alegria, who was part of the startup's first all-private astronaut mission to the ISS last April, show massive segments of the Axiom station being fabricated in Talos, Italy. The images show huge metal rings and cylindrical segments that appear to be part of a docking port. According to Axiom Space's website, the construction of the world's first commercial space station is underway, and engineers at the factory in Italy have already begun welding and machining activities for the primary structures of the Axiom Station's first module. Talus Alenia Space will provide two pressurized modules for the space station, which is expected to meet its completion in 2028. According to Axiom Space, the first pieces of fabricated flight hardware are beginning to come together and the assembled module will be shipped to Houston in early 2023. Following the shipment, the final assembly and integration process will start for a late 2024 launch. Around July of 2021, the project was undergoing a detailed design phase. At the time, the four radial bulkheads of the first module had been recently developed in Dallas Alenia Space Facilities in Turin. These bulkheads provide the structure to which radial common berth mechanisms, or CBMs, and hatches will attach. Together, the four bulkheads with their accompanying hardware form a cylindrical section, providing four ports for other station elements including docking adapters. The cylindrical protrusions seen on the bottom half of the bulkhead will serve as a connecting unit, allowing power, data, and fluids to pass from one element to another, including axiom modules and the ISS. When looking at other commercial space stations in the works such as Orbital Reef, Axiom has a few advantages that'll give them the upper hand in the future. The other space station companies will have to develop free flying space stations complete with all the power and other consumables they need to function from the outset. Axiom, by contrast, will benefit from having some of the basic services, like power, from the International Space Station at the beginning. Other than that, NASA is also developing a space station in lunar orbit known as the Lunar Gateway. The Lunar Gateway is a key component of NASA's Artemis program, which aims to return humans to the moon and establish a sustained human presence there. The Gateway would serve as a staging point for lunar landings and could also support research activities in deep space. The Lunar Gateway is designed to be a modular space station consisting of a central core module and additional modules that can be added over time. The core module will serve as the main habitation area for crew members and will contain life support systems, communication equipment, and other essential systems. Additional modules could include science labs, a logistics module for cargo storage, and even a habitation module for visiting crews from international partners. One of the advantages of the Lunar Gateway is that it will allow NASA to test new technologies and systems in deep space before sending humans to Mars. For example, the Gateway could serve as a testbed for new life support systems and radiation shielding techniques that'll be necessary for long-duration spaceflight to Mars. The Gateway could also support scientific research in areas such as astrophysics, planetary science, and heliophysics. Another advantage of the Lunar Gateway is that it will provide access to the lunar surface. Crew members on the Gateway could operate lunar rovers and other equipment remotely, allowing for more efficient and cost-effective exploration of the moon. The Gateway could also serve as a waypoint for spacecraft traveling to Mars or other destinations in the solar system, reducing the amount of fuel needed for these missions. So, even without Russia, American space is still growing thanks to private companies such as SpaceX. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section down below because everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and we hope to see you again next time.